of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grave. the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace, hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you. Lifted on your wings and the world will see that our God saves our God saves there is hope in your name in the name of the Father in the name up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace, hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you, lifted on your Good morning.
and welcome to the Salvation Army Lindsay Community Church virtual worship service for June 21st, 2020. A happy Father's Day to all of you fathers out there listening today. My dad has been gone for 22 years now. It's so hard to believe that much of that, how much, that, that much time has gone by. I miss him all the time, but I know that he is in heaven with his Lord Jesus um, in heaven. I hope that you have had or have a great earthly father, but some of us did not. Father's Day is a time to celebrate your father, and if you are a fa father, to be celebrated. God, our Heavenly Father, is the one we should all pattern ourselves after. I encourage all fathers to pursue the heart of God, to look to the Bible for examples of great fathers such as Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and others. So I hope that you can celebrate your father and other men who have also been fatherly to you as a mentor uh, over the years and celebrate our Heavenly Father as well. Thank you for joining us this morning, and even though we are apart, I hope and pray that you feel the presence of the Lord as we worship together. You will notice this morning that we have a live worship team for the first time. It's basically the Iguanos and me, <laughs> and I'm social distancing myself from them. Table talk is still going on uh, from 10 to 10.20 each Sunday. Sometimes there's very few of us, like this morning. Uh, but uh, it's just 20 minutes, and it gets a chance for you to see people and talk to them on uh, the Zoom app. So if you'd like to join next week, please contact me. Partners in Mission. We raised money across Canada to be used in ministries in India and Bangladesh and in the Bahamas. And I reported last week that Lindsay had raised $7,367.55. With the additional giving last week, we actually stand at $8,511.55. So we're $2,000 short of our target, and that's not bad considering we're in the middle of COVID. So, uh, so thank you very much for your giving and uh, to this all-important work the Salvation Army does in other countries. God will certainly bless and multiply these monies to be used in his work. Just some news on Jane Sheward. She did not have her surgery on Friday, uh, when we hope that this takes place uh, early this coming week. Those that have email would have received the weekly bulletin this week. Please remember to pray for those listed there due to their health or that they're on the family prayer list. As you may be aware, some churches have begun to open for Sunday services, and we are waiting for direction from territorial headquarters and divisional headquarters of the Salvation Army. Members of the ministry team here at our church uh, and the worship team had a Zoom meeting last Sunday where we discussed what we expected, and you will be receiving a questionnaire sometime later this week. Um, please answer those questionnaires and get them back to us. Our Sunday morning worship service will be live streamed, as it is this morning, on YouTube from this day forward, even once restrictions are lifted. So if you are sick or just can't get to the service, you will be able to join us live or watch the service at a later time. Commissioning took place yesterday for the cadets of the Messengers of the Kingdom session at the Salvation Army College for Officer Training in Winnipeg. And this included our new Corps officers, Bob and Susan Roffel. And they will be arriving August 16th. That's the end of my announcements, but we have two videos I want to show you. So here are the videos. Lieutenant Bob Roffel, Lieutenant Susan Roffel with Nathaniel. God bless you, Lieutenants Bob and Susan Ruffel and Nathaniel. Thank you for getting them through, Nathaniel. They've been lost without you, indeed. <laughs> You've come to us from Belleville Citadel in the Ontario Central East Division, and we're pleased to appoint you back into the province of Ontario, into the Ontario Division. Bob, we're appointing you as Lieutenant Bob Ruffel, Corps Officer, and Lieutenant Susan Ruffel is a Community Ministries Officer and Corps Officer of the Lindsay Corps and Family Services in the Ontario Division. God bless Lieutenants Bob and Susan Roffel and Nathaniel and the community of Lindsay.
The call to worship this morning from John 1, 9 to 13. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. And from 1 John 3 and 1, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Love so undeniable. 
Good morning. Turn with me in the scriptures to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, and we're going to be looking at the first 13 verses. And then I'm going to flip over to 1 John chapter 3 and read verses 1 and 2. So beginning with Psalm 103, 1 to 13, 1 John 3, 1 and 2. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. So far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And over to 1 John chapter 3. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. May it be so. Amen.
We're going to share in a prayer today, uh, thinking specifically of fathers, but it's a prayer, um, once I start reading the words, that certainly you can apply um, to your life as well, everybody who will be listening and participating. So let's bow together in prayer. Loving God, we come together on this Father's Day, reminded not just of our earthly fathers, but of you. You tell us that all who believe in you shall be called your children, and you invite us to address you simply as our Father. So for the wonder of your love, we do praise you. We praise you that despite all our weaknesses and disobedience, you view us not as subjects or as servants, but as children. And we rejoice that you want us to see you not as some deity remote in splendor, nor as a jealous God demanding our homage, but as a father watching over us with infinite care and tenderness. And so for the wonder of your love, we praise you. Loving Father, teach us not simply to say our Father, but to mean it, to recognize that you love us deeply and desperately as any human father, and definitely more besides. For the wonder of your love, we praise you. Teach us that it is because you care so much that you instruct us, discipline us, and correct us. For the wonder of your love, we praise you. Teach us that however far we stray from you, however much we may reject your love or ignore your guidance, still you go on reaching out, longing to draw us close once more. And so for the wonder of your love, we praise you. Loving Father, you are our Father and we praise you. Teach us to be your children, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And amen.
Thank you very much, worship. It's nice to have uh, the worship team back face to face with us this morning. Canned music is nice, but there's nothing like seeing the expression on our people's faces as they offer God praise and adoration through music. So thank you very much for being here with us this morning. I want to read to you again the one section of that prayer that Robin shared with us. Loving Father, teach us not simply to say our Father when we're thinking of that prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, but to mean it, to recognize, as we have just sung, that you love us deeply, as deeply, as dependently as any human father and infinitely more besides. As we continue our series in the I am's of Jesus, the ego imi uh, statements, how fitting it is that these statements are placed in Scripture as a reminder to you and I of showing us who our Heavenly Father is. And so how fitting that Father's Day should fall in, in amongst this series. And uh, I have the opportunity to share with you this morning about God, our Father, based upon 1 John chapter 3 and many other texts that are out there. Jesus taught us that God is indeed our Father. It's all about God. Creation is God's world. History is God's story. And you, you are God's people. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. You belong to God. And your story is just a tiny part of God's great story. We need to get over ourselves. We need to remind ourselves to get over ourselves. Because as Jesus reminds us, it's all about God, our Father. And this is what Jesus reminds us, that God is holy. There is no one like him. He's totally unique and different. He is completely good and righteous. He reminds us that God is eternal. He is the only one who always has been and always will be and who is right now. He is eternal in every way, in his knowledge, in his strength, in his presence, and his love. You can never exasperate God. God is worthy. He is worth every bit of honor and praise that we can muster towards him. David did a great job. Oh, sorry, I don't know where that came from. God is worth more than you can give him. You can never give God too much. God is Father, our Father. He becomes personal to us. And that's what we're going to talk about today. For some of you, it is almost impossible to relate to God as a father. Maybe your father was absent or neglectful or abusive. I've seen this play out in our years as corrections officers uh, back in Hamilton Wentworth Detention Center when we provided worship to the women's floor. And many times again when it rolled around to Father's Day and we talked about it, it was uh, not an easy subject for some of the women uh, to be confronted and to be shown how God is indeed uh, their Father, their Heavenly Father. And it took some bit of doing in order for them to get to that place where they could honestly acknowledge within themselves to see the love that God had lavished out upon them. In his book, Crazy Love, Francis Chan writes about his relationship with his father. This is what he says. The concept of being wanted by a father was foreign to me. Growing up, I felt unwanted by my dad. My mother died giving birth to me, so maybe he saw me as the cause of her death. I'm not sure. 
I never carried on a meaningful conversation with my dad. In fact, the only affection I remember came when I was nine years old. He put his arm around me for about 30 seconds while we were on our way to my stepmother's funeral. Besides that, the only other physical touch I experienced were the beatings I received when I disobeyed or bothered him. My goal in our relationship, he goes on to say, was not to annoy my father. I would walk around the house trying not to upset him. He died when I was 12. I cried, but also felt relief. The impact of this relationship affected me for years, and I think a lot of those emotions transferred to my relationship with God. For example, I tried hard not to annoy God with my sin or upset him with my little problems. I had no aspiration of being wanted by God. I was just happy not being hated or hurt by him. I wonder this morning, how many of us, right where we are, can relate to Francis? Francis goes on to say, When I learned that God is my father, I had to let my understanding of a father be reformed. And how does that happen? How does one go about reforming uh, that kind of scenario in understanding fully the love that God our Father has for us. Jesus does it. He does it for us. Jesus shows us what our Father is like. He fully re revealed to us the Father. If you want to know what the Father is like, Scripture tells us, look to the Son. What do we say, the expression out there, he's a chip off the old block, or the apple hasn't fallen very far from the tree when we look at the relationship of father or of son to father and uh, and daughter or whatever if you want to know what the father is like look at the son so we're going to look this morning at Jesus and what he revealed about the father god is your father what kind of father is he what is the first quality that comes to mind we've sung about it uh, Doug talked about it in his call to worship. Robin read it to us in Scripture. The first thing we see is that God, our Father, is a Father who loves you. More than any other quality, Jesus said that love describes our Father. The Father loves the Son. The relationship is characterized by love. John's gospel is full of passages about our Father's love. Listen to Three, in John chapter 5, verse 20. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. The Father loves the Son and the Son loves us with that same love. John 14, 23. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and we will, and we will come to him and make our home with him. John 15, verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, remain in my love. The Father and the Son share this eternal love, and they have invited us into that love. They want us to love them just as much as they love us. The Father and the Son share an eternal love, and they want us to partake of it. So how do we show our love for God? We've just finished doing it somewhat. As we come together week after week in worship, uh, we show our love for God by doing what He says, by obeying His commands and His teachings. This is not Jesus being legalistic. This is Jesus teaching us what love is. Love is very practical, he would say. Love is not just a sentiment, not just a warm emotion. Love is doing what is best for another person no matter what it costs us. Love is doing good for others. This is how God loves us. How did God demonstrate or show his love? 
Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, Christ died for us. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus did what was best for us no matter what it cost him. And it cost him everything. This is not sentimental or emotional love. This is an act of love. Right now, the Father loves you. But he is not just having warm feelings for you. He is doing what is best for you. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, we hear these words, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, we don't define love by anything we do. We define love by what God has done for us. For God is love. And he defines love by what he did. This is love. And he points to the incarnation, the arrival of Jesus Christ, his son, as the babe of Bethlehem. This is love. And he points to the cross. He sent Jesus, his son, as an atoning sacrifice for my sins, for your sins, for all sins. My friends, God loved, God's love for you is intensely practical. He has done what is best for you at great personal cost. He has died so you can live. The Father loves you. It is practical love. It is active love. The Father loves you more than you will ever be able to imagine. Say this with me, will you? The Father loves me. Say it with me. The Father loves me. Now let that settle in your heart. Let that settle in your mind. What kind of father is he? He is a father who loves us deeply. He's also a father that we can talk with. Can you talk with your dad? Dads can be kind of intimidating at times. I know a lot of people who say that they can't talk with their dad. Maybe he's too busy. Maybe he's too disconnected, too overbearing, too scary. Maybe he just doesn't listen. But our Father is someone you can talk with. In fact, when Jesus prayed, he usually addressed God as Father. He was talking with his, his dad. And lest you think dad is too familiar, Jesus used the term Abba, which is Aramaic for the word dad. Or as our children would say, daddy. Picture that small child curled up in her father's lap, looking with intent, intentional eyes, love permeating and saying, Daddy, I love you. That's the picture of the word Abba. God our Father. God our Abba. God our Dad. And here's the cool thing. Jesus taught us to pray to our Father. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13, 9 to 13 of what we shared in the Lord's Prayer is how we should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so when we pray this, this is who we talk with, our Father, the one Jesus called Abba. Jesus modeled this for his followers and they imitated his practice. They began to speak with God as a child would its father, as Abba. Paul, writing to the Galatians in chapter 4, verse 6, says, Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. When we pray, we don't pray in fear, but as sons and daughters who are talking with their father, whom they love, who they are talking with their dad. There's a chorus that we used to sing uh, many moons ago. Some may still sing it. Father, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. I hope on a regular basis that's the cry of our hearts towards our Heavenly Father. And if not, today's a special day. Donate, uh, uh, 
centered around father, centered around dad. So maybe we should take time throughout this day to talk with our Abba, to talk with your Abba and tell him what's on your heart. He, he, you won't be surprised. He won't be surprised for he already knows, but he loves to hear you say it because he is your father. He is a father who loves you. He is a father you can talk with. The third thing that Jesus tells us about the Father is that we can trust him. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Solomon says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will set your path straight. He will guide you. Yet Jesus had to teach his followers not to worry. Why? Because you have a father who cares for you, a father you can trust to provide for you. And he writes in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 33, that beautiful passage of Scripture uh, of, of how God sees us. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Look at the birds, he says. They don't sow or reap or store in barns. They don't have savings accounts, retirement plans, or stock options. They don't plan for the future at all. Yet your father feeds them. Are you more valuable than a bird? How many of you think you are? Don't you think then that God, your Father, will take care of you? So why do we worry? Look at the wild flowers in the field. They don't work all day to make money. They don't look in their full closets and whine, I have nothing to wear. They don't spend hours at the mall shopping for the latest fashion or the latest shoes. They don't worry about how they look, but oh, how they look. Don't worry. Your father knows what you need. Stop worrying and start trusting. Worry, you see, is an insult to God. How many of you have heard your kids say, Daddy, I have a tummy ache. I'm worried that we won't have food tomorrow. I'm worried that hydro may turn off our heat. I'm worried that the bank may repossess our house. Come on. It's hard to imagine kids worrying about those kinds of things, isn't it? Why? Because these are the things that we as adults worry about. Kids don't worry about those things because they trust dad. They trust mom. We can learn something from our kids, can we not? We have a Father who cares for us. You don't need to worry because He's watching out for you. You are very important to Him, more important than the birds and flowers, and the one who feeds the birds and clothes the flowers is taking care of you. Listen to the words of the psalmist in Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust Him with all my heart. He helps me. And my heart is filled with joy. Friends, you have a father who loves you. A father you can talk to. A father you can trust. And certainly a father who you can turn to. And in looking at this father who is approachable, we look at the passage recorded in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 11-32. To 32, a passage that I'm sure is being spoken, spoken of across the Christian world, uh, as perhaps especially today. It's the story of the prodigal son. You're familiar with it. A father has two sons. The younger one says, give me my share of the family estate now. He basically tells his Abba, his dad, I don't care about you. I just want your money. 
Give me the money and let me go. So his father does just that. The young man moves far away, wastes all his money in wild living, and then a famine strikes, and the young boy had to take a job slopping hogs just to stay alive. And for a Jewish boy, you couldn't go much lower than slopping hogs. Anyone ever watch uh, the Discovery Channel? At one time, there was uh, a documentary on it about dirty jobs, and it showed in that program exactly what was involved in slopping pigs. You sunk pretty low uh, if you get to that position in life. Then one day, Scripture tells us he all of a sudden came to his senses, and he realizes that back home, the hired hands on his father's farm were living way much better than he was. He, decide, he decides to eat crow, to go home and beg his father's forgiveness, and hopefully his dad would take him back. Not as a son, for he knew he didn't deserve that, but, that, but just as a hired hand on the farm. Pause. He came to his senses. What did he realize when he came to his senses? My father. My father. He realized that his dad was someone he could turn to in trouble. He realized that there was a possibility of going home once more. And you know what happened next. When he got home, the father called uh, the cops and had him arrested. <laughs> no. The father chewed him out and told him, you made your choice, now you get to live with it. It sucks to be you, doesn't it? No. The father runs to him, throws his arms around him, something that we're not able to do right now, but one day we will be able to do that takes him back, not as a hired hand, but as his child, as his son. He puts a robe on his back, shoes on his feet, the family signet ring on his finger, and then he kills the prized calf and busts out the frozen cheesecake and throws a huge party. We'll be doing that one day when COVID's over. <laughs> Who is the father in this story? God. It's all about God. It's God's story. And the hero is God, who is our Father, extravagantly generous, extravagantly gracious. He is a Father you can turn to. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, we hear these words. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You who were formerly far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Friends, it's safe to come home. It's safe to come home. God our Father is there, and he is waiting for you. The worship team is going to come and share with us again, and you take this moment to reflect upon God, our Father, our Heavenly Father, and I pray that throughout this day, through your own earthly father or the fact that you contemplate God as heavenly father, that your heart will be stirred. And for you who may be wandering, that you will come to the reality of knowing it's safe at home. It's safe at home. 
for God your Father is there waiting for you. Blessings. Today's benediction. May God the Father prepare your journey. Jesus the Son guide your footsteps. The Spirit of life strengthen your body. The three in one watch over you on every road that you follow. Amen. He brought me and all his love for me, all his love for me. Who the sun sets free, always free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes I A slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died.
Okay, dads, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now, some of you have already let me know how uncomfortable you were in last week's meeting. So tonight, we're going to try to respect each other's boundaries. What? Tonight, we've also got a guest with us, David. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hey, guys. I'm David. David. Hey, 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 hey. How many kids do you have, David? None. At least not at the moment. Uh, my wife is pregnant, and uh, she should be delivering any day now. Mm, that's great. So Super. Cool. Oh, great. Awesome. Who'd like to go first? Anyone. Anyone. I'll go. Perfect. Todd? Yes. My daughter and I went to the mall, and she said she wanted to take the stairs to the second level. And I said, I don't trust stairs because they're always up to something. <laughs> Todd, I'm sorry that happened. Okay. I encourage you to try to resist the urge to make jokes like that. My turn? Okay. Can I go? Okay. Yesterday, actually, my daughter got home and she asked me how my day was. And I said, well, a guy tried to sell me a coffin, but that's the last thing I need. Oh, Jerry, oh, Jerry that Jerry. joke is dead on arrival. Because it's the last thing I need. David, <laughs> how about you? Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't say this. This is a safe zone. Just jump on in. Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm just scared of being a dad. I'm afraid I'm gonna start telling bad jokes just like my dad. Well, it might be in our nature. We can fight against it. Hey, speaking of nature, I tried to catch some fog yesterday. I missed. <laughs> M-I-S-T. Oh, You're a monster. I, this is where the boundary is. I'm done. This is where you are. Hello? Really? Okay, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there. That was Julie. Her water just broke. I guess the baby finally ran out of womb. <laughs> I'm gonna be a dad. Don't you think you should be going? Oh, yeah. So I told my wife she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. Oh. 